morning and thank you for joining us on the Tuesday edition of TVC Breakfast. I'm Veronica Dan Iqboy. Joining me this morning is Ibrahim Shita. Ibrahim. Veronica, how are you? Welcome back. <laughs> good to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> Absolutely, but it's good to have you back Absolutely. on set. Uh, an array of issues we will be looking at this morning, of course, the Edo governorship election, developments coming out of there, especially reactions from uh, major contenders in that governorship election. We'll be looking at some of it, as well as uh, we're talking about the matters of safety, how we can improve on it as a country and as individuals. But first, let's begin with this story, where the Federal Executive Council has approved the setting up of a disaster relief fund that is meant to engender quick response to victims of disasters across the country. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wali Edum, spoke on Monday while briefing State House correspondents shortly after the Federal Executive Council meeting chaired by President Bola Tinubu at the Presidential Villa Abuja. The fund is to source finances from the three tiers of government and private sector players for flood victims. This is coming as the Federal Executive Council constituted a technical committee to reassess the dams across the country, and particularly the Alao Dam in Borno State, where scores of lives were lost recently as a result of the flood disaster that ravaged many parts of the state's capital, Maiduguri. The committee is to be chaired by the Minister of Water Resources and has order members. The Federal Executive Council have constituted a committee to look into not only the allow dam, but other dams in the country, to reassess them and come up with recommendations that will solve the challenge of flooding and also putting into use the available dams we have. Mr. President's views that we need in this era of climate change, of climate uh, uh, events, as well as the fact that, that from time to time there will be, no matter the prevention measures, there will be um, disasters that will occur, that we need to build greater resilience in the form of a substantial disaster relief fund, separate from the agencies that actually intervene physically. This will focus on the financing. All right. Um, some would say in a little too late or never too late, whichever way you want to Better late than never. Better <laughs> late than never, um, because the matters of climate change did not begin today. That's right. And uh, this has been with us for over 10 years now, the matters of climate change, because I recall 2012, the kinds of damage that um, rainfall caused, especially, I recall, Kogi State, how bad it was there. And so uh, that is why I am saying that although this is coming at this time, um, issues of climate change are things that uh, it seems like we haven't taken as seriously as we need to. But it's good that we're seeing government talk about uh, this relief fund at this time. But um, my issue is walking the talk and not just having the talk, ensuring that uh, we see through these kinds of conversation and this money is judiciously used such that we do not have a matter like this, like we see in my degree, reoccurring. Yeah, one of the ways to check uh, government's uh, delivering of um, good governance is um, to see how they manage disasters because disasters are always meant to happen, mm -hmm. you know, due to climate change, due to human error, due to, you know, our own activities on the earth and some other things. It could be conflict, it could be insurgency, it could be anything. So they readily, uh, how readily the, the government is available or how readily all of the things that they need, the resources that they need to uh, mitigate the impact of these or to address these. But most of the time, it shouldn't be based on uh, reactiveness. It, should be, it shouldn't be reactionary. It should be proactive. proactive. So because... Uh, it is one thing for us to say this is going to happen or we know that this is going to happen and we aren't doing anything. But when we are able to mitigate the impact by being proactive, then that would be 
definitely, you know, it would definitely help the, the, the people. We, we, we've had um, insurgency, people displaced to the IDP camps. Now, this is not even insurgency. This is uh, a, a, a breakdown uh, of, um, of, of a dam and then displaced people, destroyed property and all mm -hmm. of that, that they had to move to the IDP. It's good that people are now, you know, getting resettled back to you know, their, their environment and their But, but the their, damage their has been done because yeah. a lot of persons lost their lives. Mm -hmm. You can't get that back. That's right. Properties were also lost. Um, well, you might say you can get some back, but you can't get it back, lives especially. And uh, some persons lost their livelihood. That's you right. can't get that mm -hmm. back as quickly as possible. So like you have rightly pointed out, we need to be as proactive as possible. We've had ecological funds. Mm -hmm. What are we doing what with this? With or yeah. what have we done with this monies? Interesting that we are looking at, um, you know, assessing the state of our dams across the country is very, very important especially one like Kanji Dam that has been built many, many years, I think in the 60s or 70s. No, what about the one that, uh, the, the, the buffer dams? That the buffer, the that holding dams and buffer dams to, that were yeah, required said rather to, to hold to, some of this, collect this water so that in times of disasters such as um, drought, mm -hmm. you can use this water yeah, for, irrigation, so, for irrigation and all of it. So these are the issues, measures we should start putting in place. Mm. What has happened with the holding dams that we were supposed to have built? That's right. These conversations were initiated many years ago. In fact, especially... Several years ago, several decades with, ago. Yeah. Well, with, um, uh, what is this country now? When they released their waters... Uh, Cameroon. Cameroon. Now, they had a conversation that there should be a holding dam that receives the water. That's so that would not feel the impact. Right. And up to now, we haven't had that. So these, these are the conversations. The we, we, these we are the issues they, we should follow through. Yeah. Government is supposed to be a continuum. So we shouldn't say, okay, because uh, an administration or whatever did not um, start that project or started the project and mm. didn't end it, we will not look at it and build on it. It's important that we look at the issues here That's and right. there. Was there a conversation that was initiated decades ago that we can build on? These, these are the kinds of things I would expect government to spotlight on because climate change issues mm. are critical issues that are displacing a lot of persons, causing security challenges because it's also going to affect uh, food supply. That's right. And, and Whether we things, like it or not. And one of the things that we also need to pay attention to is, well, it's going to help a lot of people if they really follow through this, uh, this plan, uh, plan of action. Transparency and accountability is very, very key because the allocation of resources and, you know, we should also think of, okay, the federal budget should, uh, some of, uh, a percentage of the federal government should be, you know, given to that. Uh, the private sector should be co-opted. You know, some other different thinking. sources should be, should be brought into it. So, uh, but one thing is, major thing is people want to see these things done. They want to see this plan of actions materialized, but not, you know, Later on, we'll be talking about uh, corruption and all of that, embezzlement and some things that they, they are meant to do, and what? it's not been done and all of that. So it, it's, it's a gamut of problems, it's a gamut of issues. A technical but, yeah. committee has been put in place, and so I believe Nigerians should keep their eyes on them, uh, because right now uh, we should start holding people to account. That's right. I mean, look at the, the visuals on, on the screen. People's properties, mm -hmm. uh, you know, overcome by the floods there and then we're talking about houses that the integrity test some might have to yeah, take my cave yeah, in yeah, yeah and that is uh because the water would have definitely sweat taken away you know yes. eroded the foundations of some that's of people sweat some uh, dead bodies were said to have been evacuated uh by the floods and so what happens health challenges so much. Yes, we know there are contributions being made mm. by individuals and government to help people, right. but we do not have to get to that point. I'm saying that prevention is better than cure, as they After often all, it's, say. It's avoidable. So, yes. So as much as possible, it's good to see government have these kinds of conversation. But what more can be done to help Nigerians at the end of the day when we're talking about cushioning the effect of climate change?